We're interested in the function of the genome, um, how it, the basic rules of how it works, how the genes are turned off and on, and how that links to disease. You've got 37 trillion cells in your body, and each cell has the same underlying code. And we've got two meters of DNA in each one of those cells. I get that two meters of DNA down into something that's a tenth of the width of your human hair. So it's an amazing packing problem. Most people have heard of genes. They're the big thing in the genome. But what we have is switches in and around the genes which turn them off and on. The problem with them is they're unpredictable as to which gene they're switching off and on. They're kind of randomly mixed in and around the gene. And so we find that these switches are damaged in nearly all of us to some degree and those switches will give you a disease if you actually damage the switch ever so slightly. Scientists are used to looking at things in two dimensions. So if you think of a tube map, it's in two dimensions. If you did a cross section through like you, and you sort of dug down, you'd see that it's a complicated three-dimensional structure with lots of engineering tunnels and all that sort of thing. So to be able to visualize that in 3D is actually is really important because you really understand the structure of it. So we develop lots of methods which actually, using the sequencing technologies, which are amazing these days, we could work out which bits of the genome were touching each other. But then we need some sort of way to visualize what we reconstructed. And I went to a conference about the end of 2014, and I saw somebody from Gloucester called Frederick Folder-Marie modeling protein structures using a tool called FoldSynth. They work at Goldsmiths and they have um, computer scientists who are doing games technology. We set up a kind of informal collaboration, and we could instantly see when we fed in data which basically was fairly incomprehensible, we found we could really understand the structure a lot better. And we now got this wonderful uh, situation in which you can put a pair of virtual reality glasses on and I can actually see all the genes that I've been studying over the years in their order and exactly how they fold up and touch each other. Oh, this is amazing. When you're actually in the middle of it, it's, I mean, we tried it with many people. And everybody thinks being in there is just so much easier to understand what the actual processes are going on. If you're trying to explain to somebody the principles, on a screen it's very hard. In VR, it's like that. I put the glasses on and there, there they were, all the, all the genes that we've been studying over the last 30, 40 years set out in the way that we think they're arranged. It was a, a rather moving occasion. I think I said, I think I've gone to heaven. <laughs>